Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi Wa sallam Amma ba'd I thought it would be beneficial for us To go over In a very brief way So we can get a taste of The Aqidah of the Salaf al-Saleh From the Rasail from the books of the Salaf and how they wrote and how they wrote for their time but in fact the time in which they wrote in to emphasize and defend the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah is relevant for us in this time so it's very important that we begin when we talk about being Salafi and we talk about following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we have to gain that understanding from the Qur'an, the Sunnah, and the Minhaj or methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. And the only way we can study the Minhaj or the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah is by studying these treatises that the Salaf of this Ummah left behind. What, what is the, the, the treasure that they left for us? As the Prophet Sallallahu said, Al- that knowledge is the the inheritance or what the uh, what the NBA what the prophets what they left behind uh, and that is the treasure of the scholars they inherit the uh, the treasures the treasures of knowledge from the cell of this ummah so we'll read and make some ta'liqat or just brief uh, editorial from the book Aqidat al-Raziyain which is from the statements of Imamain Abi Zur'ata wa Abi Hatim al-Raziyain fi usul al-Din wa al-Itiqad so this is the Aqidah of Raziyain. This means this is the Aqidah, the treaties of these two great Imams. These great Imams of Ahl Sunnah that had memorized, they say about uh, Imam Abi Zur'ah that he memorized something like, uh, I believe, 100,000 hadith or possibly more. And we will try to benefit from some of the small benefits of course the Shaykh left many gave us many benefits of the treaties from Shaykh Abdul Malik Ibn Ahmed Ramadani Hafizullah Ta'ala one of our Mashaykh who lived in Medina who is uh, Jazairi or from Algeria and he began the book and we'll read some of his muqaddama some of his uh, introduction he said Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. and then he began to talk a little bit about the importance of this risala of this uh, small treatise, and that he said it's from the Mu'allafat Salafana Awwal. This is from the what the Salaf wrote for us. These are from the treasures of the Salaf. And this book goes back to the third century Hijri. And it is a book which uh, specializes or was specifically written to emphasize the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. And that this treatise is important for us because it's an illustration of how the Salaf, what the Salaf uh, left behind. Meaning that the Salaf, they wrote books of Aqidah like, like this, and small treatises, books on Iman, especially Iman, and books on Al Asma'i wa Sifat. And they did that out of necessity. 
Why perhaps would that be a necessity? Because Ahl al-Bid'ah began to appear. The, the Muslim Ummah had begun to be affected by philosophy and the ideas uh, of philosophers, Greek philosophers uh, specifically, and other foreign communities to the, uh, to the Muslims and the Orthodox creed of Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And due to this reason, the ulama sunnah, they began to write because these deviant groups began to appear like the Khawarij and the Murjia who had issues especially and bid'ah especially dealing with Iman. For example, the Murjia used to uh, say that Iman is not, uh, that amal or deeds is not from Iman. That Iman is sufficient to say to us, uh, that, you, that you believe. So for example, if someone says, La ilaha illallah, I ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, for them that is enough to have Iman even if they never really practice Islam. As long as they consider themselves a Muslim, then they are a mu'min. This is to the murjia. And we know that this creed is a uh, uh, fasid. You know, it's a fasid creed in that the one who does no deeds, the one who does not practice, as the ulama, you know, uh, make clear, although they differ over the issues of salat and other issues, but many of the ulama, they mention that the one who leaves the prayer, for example, because the Prophet ﷺ said, Man taraka salat fakad kafara, whoever leaves the prayer has disbelieved. So due to this fact, uh, this lets us know that salat is what? It's from amal. And leaving this amal is a is a disbelief. And many other nusuls that deal with this issue, but the point being is that Ahl Sunnah wrote these books. Why did the Salaf write those books about Iman and about um, about Al Asma'i wa Sifat? Because Ahl Bid'ah began to appear and they deviated in what? With related to Tawheed, in relation to Tawheed, they uh, deviated with regards to Al Asma'i wa Sifat. So those earlier groups like the Je uh, Jahamiyyah, the Mu'tazila, and then later the Ashaira, and the Maturidi Maturidiya, and other groups like this, that they De deviated mainly with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's either his divine names or his divine names and attributes or his attributes. So for example, this is why we have issue with the Asharis mainly is because that they negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat except seven and that they make ta'wil or and uh, uh, they make a give a mis interpretation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes. For example, Allah says, Ar Rahman ala ars istawa. Allah says, uh, uh, the most merciful rose above his throne. And there's a lot of talking about himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahl Sunnah says, Ar Rahman ala ars istawa. Allah rose above his throne. End of, end of story, in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't need to go, we don't ask cave, we don't ask how, we don't ask why, and we don't try to explain it away or misinterpret uh, it in order to fit our intellect. Instead, we just know because Allah said it about himself and he said it in more than seven places in the Quran. Uh, throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made clear that su He subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above His throne in a manner that suits His majesty and that He has divine names and attributes and we believe in them and accept them if they come from the Quran and if they come from the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and this is why those the Salaf of this Ummah defended the creed of Ahl sunnah by writing books about Iman and writing books Books about Al Asma'i wa Sifat. You didn't have an issue really with the early deviants with regards to Rububiyyah, and you didn't have a, de uh, a difference with regards to Tawheed al Uluhiyyah. That those early deviant groups, they still worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But 
except for those ones who had bid'a mukaffara that went outside the fold of Islam. But they didn't question the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather they made, they negated his divine attributes or his sifat. Whereas later groups of deviants that we find, like in, in the Arab Peninsula and otherwise, in the time of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and probably perhaps before him, you had groups that began to deviate with regards to the Rububiyyah of Allah, the Lordship of Allah, or and especially with regards to the, uh, to the Uluhiyyah, to the fact that Allah, all worship belongs to Allah. They began to supplicate to the dead. They began to, uh, you know, sacrifice to the dead, to their dead saints, etc. Believing they were coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in fact, this is what the original mushrikeen used to do. Uh, going back to some of the importance, so Sheikh Abdul Malik, he mentioned here, he said, وَقَدْ كَانُوا يَعْرَفُونَ حَقْ مَعْرَفَةِ uh, so the Salaf, and this uh, is specifically, this is in general the Salaf were like this, but especially uh, Imam Raziyain, because that's what we're talking about now, these two great Imams, that they wrote and defended, they knew the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is to worship him, him and him alone, as the Prophet sallallahu said, haq Allah al-ibadi and ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. The right of Allah over his servant is to worship him and him alone and not associate partners with him. So the great imam, these imams, they knew this. And they gave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his haq by worshiping him and him alone. And they defended the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah from the deviants by uh, their books. And their books, as we mentioned, regarding Tawheed. And one thing, and they were like soldiers of the Sunnah. They were Mujahideen because they fought Ahl Bidah. They didn't sit with Ahl Bidah. They criticized Ahl Bidah. They avoided Ahl Bidah. And they did not, in the extreme situations, follow the Jana'is of Ahl Bidah. And so Ahl Sunnah has always defined themselves and kept themselves away from the people of desires in Bidah and have always been the defenders of the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And this is why the Shaykh then he says, he says, Min ulama'i hurras, hurras al aqidah du'a to tawheed, that the ulama of the Sunnah, qadeemin wa hadithin, the, the ulama of this, in, in the past and of this time, they were defenders of the Sunnah. And they were defenders of Tawheed. They were du'at to Tawheed. They were callers of Tawheed. And this brings up another point, that when you hear these modern day du'at, and you have to wonder, what are they du'at for? What are they du'at really to? What are they really calling to? If they're only calling to contemporary issues and social ills, then you gotta question them. Because the ulama in the past, and more importantly, the NBA called the Tawheed. And they rectified their social ills. But they began with Tawheed and always continue with Tawheed. So calling the people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, ikhlas and understanding Tawheed, the books of Tawheed, the books of Sunnah, the books of Fiqh, all of this is for establishing the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Anbiya, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid the Taghut. And the Taghut are those who are worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jal. And then the Shaykh he mentioned, Lam yaktubu li anna al aqidata kanat maslahata al waqt. ولكن لأن الكتابة في العقيدة هي مصلحة كل وقت. That was a fight that, that I wanted to bring that uh, from the Sheikh. 
he said that the these du'a to Tawheed, the Salaf, they did it right just because Aqidah was important in that time. And that it was uh, uh, something that rectified just in that time. But rather they wrote because Aqidah is beneficial during all time. And it is maslaha, it rectifies during all time. And a statement, I believe it is Imam Malik or Imam Shafi'i who said this statement. He said, قال, that la yaslah akhir hadhihi umma illa bima salaha awlaha aw kama qal he said that the the the, the, the na- this nation will not be rectified except by with what rectified the the early generations the salaf the first of this umma and what was it it was the call to Tawheed. It was the call to the Sunnah. It was defending the Sunnah. And the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnati will Jama'ah. To give us a little bit of background in this first sitting about uh, Imam Raziyain. Uh, first, the Tarjima Abi Zur'a Ar Razi. He was one of the authors. He's one. Ar Razi. So, Raziyain meaning two, the two Razis. And this has to do with their intisab to the Balad, the place they uh, were from. And Imam Dhahabi said about Imam, uh, about Imam Abi Zur'a, he said, Qala Hafiz Abu Ahmed ibn Adi, Sami'tu Abi Yuku, Kuntu Biray, Wa Ana Gulam fi Bazazin. And after this qissa, this story, because it's not necessarily relevant for us, he just mentioned that this great imam, that he died in 264 hijri of plague. He died due to plague. Rahmatullahi alayhi, rahmatul wasiya. And that The other Imam, uh, Abi Hatim Al Razi, that he he was Abu Abdurrahman Muhammad ibn Idris ibn Mundir Al Hamdali min Bilad Al Ray, and it is said about him as a great uh, muhaddith that he lived uh, at the time of Imam Bukhari, and that. This great Imam that this great Imam uh, brought great benefit to the Ummah. And the one who narrated this book, and this is also something that we should learn about the books of the Salaf, which differ for the, the books of the Muta'akhirin, like a lot of our scholars and, and those who even before them, is that the early books of the Salaf, they used to have uh, narrators. They gave us the chain of narrators for their books when they when they mentioned. So it would be say, call us uh, so and so, submit to so and so on Abihi, on Abihi, or on Jiddi, on Jiddi, or Jiddi, or what have you. They would give us the silsila, the chain uh, up to the author of the kitab. And so it was very important for them the ruwayat, the silsila of ilm. Whereas the later books be due to uh, making them more uh, less complex to giving you just the silsila chain of narrators, they made them to where they just gave us the text and generally generally the text instead of like the uh, the books of hadith and. Uh, the one who who related or narrated on those two great imams was the was Imam uh, Ibn Abi Hatim. So he was the son of Abi Hatim, and.
then it is said Uh, the ulama of the sunnah have praised him and Imam Dhahabi and others have written about him and that he was a great uh, uh, muhaddith and from the great uh, immata sunnah and before we get in the text so we'll take it step by step and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil